It's a beautiful beginning of the week, so let's jump into yet again another Transformer Slag podcast Patreon listener question. Once again, if you want to join the Transformer Slag podcast, help support the podcast, let us know we're doing a half decent job here in the Transformer world, keeping you educated, giving you the knowledge on the news, reviews, and the lore, as well as uh, leveling up your information in the Transformer world and knowing how it works from the inside out, patreon.com forward slash protoman or check the pinned comment or the description below and come join us. What does it get you? It gets your name in the end credit scroll at the end of every segment moving forward, access to our exclusive Discord where we break the news, share the news, talk about everything, get exclusive downloads, sales, save money on your hobby, and more. And of course, depending on what tier, maybe a gift in the mail, or, like our guy here today, get a chance to ask a Patreon listener question. And we got a Patreon listener question here from our longtime listener, Downright Superb, and he wants to know, Proto, I'm thinking in the twilight of my years of collecting after some time, uh, after so many recent toy lines, I don't see there being a better version of most of these G1 and Beast Wars characters. Plus, I don't see Hasbro going all in on Transmetals or non-show Beast Wars characters. I have zero interest in movie-related stuff and the Unicron trilogy. I may be close to being done with collecting. My question is, how many other fans do you think are in the same boat as me? Also, do you think there are others on the opposite side of the spectrum who only are die-hard Unicron trilogy fans that can replace me as a customer once I am done? Thank you for everything, Downright Superb. Well, thank you, Downright Superb. Um, Just to attack the second part, this is something that uh, I've discussed many times with different Hasbro people. Long sit-downs at the bar, at BotCons, some of those Hasbro people at TFCons, and it's always this deeper conversation of evolution and it'll always march forward regardless of what exists in the past the good old days are not those days today and things change and things evolve and that's that and and another reality that people are only slowly getting used to the idea of is this is an old franchise And we're very lucky that this franchise that has been around for 38 years is still around and strong as ever. Where when we think about stuff that could be comparable to it, because it has its other compatriots, whether it be G.I. Joe or He-Man, which both of those are definitely not in the same place that Transformers is, especially in the mainstream. And then you got stuff that are older than those two brands, stuff like the Marvel world, which finally really is finding itself after so many years since the 60s and the 70s, where, you know, with the 90s, it had success with toys and and cartoons and, and of course, the comic book boom in the 90s with the speculator boom. And then, of course, the movies and stuff in the 2000s that really brought it to the mainstream. But there's so many stuff that are from those eras that didn't survive. Where's Dick Tracy? You know, where's Flash Gordon? Where's the Phantom? Where's, you know, there's there's so many that were also big brands that didn't survive. And why am I bringing this up? What does it have to do with his question exactly? Well, it has to do with the evolution and how things have to change in order to keep going. Now, the best example that I could give before I really dive deeper into what you mentioned here is G.I. Joe. You know, G.I. Joe debuted in, in 1964, the 12 inch line. Real, uh, Real American Hero was not a thing yet. It was just this 12 inch line of, of characters. And one has to ask what happened to those 12 inch fans all those years later? From 1964 to 1982, which was the debut of G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, our three and a quarter figures, Cobra Commander, Duke, the whole nine yards. You know, what happened 18 years later? Those 12-inch fans, well, they were still around. They stuck around for a bit. And then in the 90s, you know, Hasbro gave them that Hall of Fame line, which gave a little bit of love to those 12-inch figures. You know, heck, 
Brian Savage, who ran Bacon and Jocon, was a 12-inch fan. Giggity. But, you know, as time passes, when you think of G.I. Joe, you think of Duke, Cobra Commander, and those iconic real American hero characters. You don't think of, you know, Scar on the face and Cobra, uh, you know, Kung Fu grip on 12-inch figures. Double giggity. But (laughs) what I'm trying to get at, though, is that through G.I. Joe, we saw an example of 18 years from its origin, things get changed, and then a new generation picks up the reins and marches forward and changes the face of a brand. And you mentioned here, you know, in your second part here, do you think there will be diehard Unicron Trilogy fans that one day might replace you? Ironic statement in the sense that between 1964's original G.I. Joe to 1982's Real American Hero G.I. Joe was 18 years. Generation 1, Transformers, was 1984. Unicron Trilogy was 2002. Also, ironically, 18 years. I think that as time progresses, things will change. But what will happen, we don't know. We've seen change before, for the better. Generation 1 had its run back in the 90s, and then it exhausted itself. Now, granted, it wasn't its own fault. Other stuff around that came around that took it the attention, whether it be Ninja Turtles or Power Rangers. You know, Those were two other global phenomenon in the boy brands that took the attention away from the robots in disguise from Cybertron. But when they tried to reinvent themselves and give people even more G1 with Generation 2 in a lot of ways, no one was interested. And again, might have been Power Rangers' fault. They were getting all the attention, but at the end of the day, people were bored. It took a you know a Beast Wars and really shake it, shaping up the brand and completely different IPs and different trademarks and, and everything like that in order to change everything and save the brand. And then after the Beast Wars thing kind of petered out, it became Unicron Trilogy. Sure, there was that small car robots, robots in the skies moment in between that. But after the Beast era, it was the Unicron Trilogy. Again, trying to reinvent the brand, a different look, a different taste, a different style of, of presentation, a, a hot, hard lean on the Japanese writing, and then CG in the second part of it. You know, a lot of things change. And then when we look at what really gave birth to the brand's, you know, rebirth in a lot of ways, and and the rise of the Phoenix and its biggest success, the movie stuff. Good or bad, regardless of your opinion of the quality of the movie stuff in terms of you know storytelling or character development or characters, it, uh, it made Transformers a household name around the world in ways that it never was up to that point, outside of maybe 1985's G1 and 1998's Beast Wars during the Transmetal era in terms of its peak popularity. So what I'm trying to get at is, and it will go back to your questions, just to kind of lay that all out there, is how many other fans do you think are in the same boat as you? A lot. There is. All the time I see people that quit the hobby, that get bored, that that hit the age of 40 or get married or have children, and all of a sudden priorities become different. They also feel that they peaked in their hobby, that they felt they got the best versions of their characters. It might not even be something that was available now because of Legacy or Kingdom or or Earthrise. Could have been a third-party masterpiece-related figure that they felt that they've peaked, and now it's like, well, that's the best Skids figure I'll ever get, and I don't think I need anything better than that. And... You know, some people even felt that they reached that peak even before with the early classic stuff. They were just kind of satisfied even with that. I know many people that were hardcore fans that have really dialed it back because they felt that they've reached the apex, the peak, if you will, of their collecting interest. But that being said, any smart company knows that that is something that will always be on the horizon and Transformers themselves as a brand has experienced it before where people have felt that they've gotten all they wanted out of the idea and then moved on to other things that they had to reinvent themselves. Luckily for the Transformers brand, there was other moments of reinvention that then they could lean on and other demographics that were grown into those regions which was the Beast Wars era of kids who grew up in those mid to late 90s. 
and the kids who were born in the Unicron trilogy of the 2000s, and then the kids that were born into the late 2000s with the movie era, and then into stuff like even animated and Transformers Prime. And all those pockets of kids that grew up in those different eras that have nostalgia, and to them it's their G1, as I use air quotes here that you can't see, um, they will replace those people. And I think that the success and the sales of Kingdom and how successful those sales of Kingdom were, Kingdom did very well for Hasbro. It was a very good-selling Transformer line that even at one point it was trending on uh, on um, Amazon, was trending on Twitter because of how well some of those Beast Wars toys were selling and selling out. I remember I even talked about it, you know, like, wow, Beast Wars was trending because of the Amazon sales and it was a number one seller on Amazon. It was like, something's here, you know, something is here. But it, it really has nothing to do with Beast Wars being greater than G1 or something. It's just that that generation, those kids that were like five to 10 years old during that era of Beast Wars were now in their late 20s, early 30s a prime buyer and demo of product and give it five years from now it's going to be those if not now those unicron trilogy kids and five years from that 10 years from now it's going to be those movie kids and whatever will be the fiction that by the way will also exist in between those you know between now and 10 years from now all the shows that'll be created it'll find an audience and it'll find an audience that'll have nostalgia for it in the same way that I find it ironic, I run toy conventions here in Montreal, and I used to joke for years running these toy conventions, I ran these conventions for years, that the episode one Star Wars toys were always poison. They would never sell, you could have them, tons of them mint on card and no one cared about them. You'd, give, you'd sell them at five bucks a piece and people still weren't buying them. And now, because of all the kids that grew up on episode one and episode two and episode three, the prequel Star Wars movies, were kids that grew up on that, those late 90s, early 2000s kids, they want to now hunt down those red card, as we call them, red card Star Wars toys of episode one and get a Jar Jar finger, figure and get all of this because they have nostalgia for it and it's their nostalgia. It's their time now. And that's what happens. That's what happens. Sooner or later, you're going to have people that are nostalgic for OG Yu-Gi-Oh cards and, and you know, Bakugan and, and Beyblade, all that early 90s hype stuff that, excuse me, early 2000s uh, hype toy products because they had nostalgia for it. The world keeps moving forward. And that goes to what I was saying at the beginning of this is that the there's this evolution that happens and you either evolve with it or you just kind of go extinct and end up like Dick Tracy or Flash Gordon or the Phantom. And those guys get stuck and left behind while everything else moves forward. And Transformers is a very strong brand. It's able to, with no pun intended, change to match the rest of the world when needed. And I've said many times looking at the Transformer brand that it's done that to survive. Micro Masters in the face of Micro Machines po being popular. Pretenders in the face of Ninja Turtles being popular. And then we go on and on to, oh, hey, Bakugan's really popular. Let's make Bot Shots. Lego is really popular. Let's make Creo. Oh, wow, the, the um, Rescue Heroes line is doing extremely well for Play School. Why don't we do Rescue, rescue Bots and all stuff like that? They constantly evolve the line to match what's popular in the world to keep up with that and get a piece of that cultural pie in order to keep their IP alive. And that's always been the success and the secret to the Transformers brand. And something like people leaving is not surprising, but that's a personal choice. That's not something that I feel is so much affected by the choices of Hasbro. It's Hasbro is doing what makes sense to march forward and whatever happens around it in terms of fans, well, that'll be the natural progression. People will leave and new people will come in and new people will come in also that left at one point and have nostalgia for the new things. 
And the thing is, too, this is another thing also. My father, who is a toy collector, and he collects toys from the 60s and the 70s also, and some even from the 50s, when I go to his toy conventions, where I'm probably the youngest guy in the room, <laughs> everyone else is in their 60s and 70s and 80s even, um, you see how it all comes around again, where then after all these guys, when the kids leave the nest and all these guys retire at 65 or 67 or whatever your retirement age is, wherever you come from as a listener, then these guys all of a sudden want to revisit their their past again and they get nostalgic for it and everything gets a whole new life so stuff like g1 might see a whole new resurgence all over again in maybe a couple of years and and a whole new breath of life and and a smart business and a smart company with their ip will know how to milk that and keep that going forward so it's sad to hear that you're you're kind of like at your in the twilight of your years of of collecting but much like I hear many times also, they feel like it's the end. But sometimes all it takes is just something new and different to catch their attention and bring them back in. Or alternatively, you do what kind of even someone like what I do. I've lived this brand my whole life. I obsess over it. I know everything about it. But how do I keep it interesting? How do I keep it fascinating when you have 10,000 figures and every variant and everything like that? You have a secondary hobby. You have something that's the breakaway from Transformers. You never truly leave it. You just kind of go for a walk and play Magic the Gathering or watch some anime or, in my case, sometimes even, you know, race a streetcar, you know? Something just to, to keep you busy because the brand will always be there. And when you're ready to come back and buy that new figure, it'll happen. And I guarantee anything in your head that you want to happen one day in terms of figures being updated or characters getting figures or anything like that in price points or scale, it'll happen sooner or later. The beautiful thing with Hasbro is that they know if you gave them everything they wanted right now, you'd have nothing to give them over the next 10 to 15 years. And that's a whole other story when we get into quarterly reports and stock investments. And we have a new CEO, and that new CEO right now, Chris Cox, wants to show that he's going to be a good choice. And when that quarter report comes up in reflection to his time, obviously we're going to get a few reports that are still reflecting before he joined. But when the quarter reports get to his time, he's going to want to show profits and he's going to want to show success. And you don't want to blow everything out before then. But that's a whole other discussion. So I hope that answers your question a little bit. I know it's a little profound and there's a lot of extra layers to kind of take apart there. But when it comes to this hobby, it'll always keep marching forward and there'll always be fresh blood. And I'm always reminded of that because when you go to a TFCon now, you see the age demos. You see how there's really young kids, there's kids in the middle, and then there's the old fogies like me. <laughs> I'm not that old, but old in, in relation to what this brand is and how long it's been around. It's been around for 38 years, and I've been around slightly more than that. <laughs> so it kind of uh, all compounds itself. It makes sense. I hope that answers your question. I hope that maybe people could take something away from this. And like I always say with this podcast, like it's literally the motto of this podcast is I hope you learn something. And if you want to be a patron like Downright Superb, come join the podcast. Support us. Let us know we're doing a half decent job and you're enjoying what you're listening and hearing here. Patreon.com forward slash protoman or check the pinned comment or description below. And like I always say, Rock out with the robots in disguise.